Jenny has the giving records for last year. If you have not received yours yet, you would see her. Uh, she has it for you. Uh, if you don't talk to her today, they're going in the mail. Uh, so hopefully we'll have the right address to get it to you. Uh, but it'll take a few more days. So uh, if you want that, see her. Uh, number two, uh, there's a, I found a card on the pulpit this morning uh, that says this. Uh, hence, let me read it to you real quick. It says, Dear Church Family, Thank you so much for the beautiful plant that you sent to our family and for all the prayers and all the love. We are so blessed to be a part of this wonderful church family. Uh, we love you, Jerry and Carol Anderson. Uh, thank you, card for them, uh, the death of their son-in-law. Is that correct? All right. Uh, so thank you for uh, extending uh, prayers to them and your hands to them uh, while they went through that difficult time. Matthew chapter number 4. Matthew chapter number 4. Now we're following along. We're walking with Jesus from the from Bethlehem, from, uh, I started to say the cradle, I guess what to say, the manger. Uh, from the manger uh, all the way to the resurrection. And we've been walking with him for a few weeks. Remember, we at Christmas time, we dealt with his birth. Uh, we dealt with the wise men and all of the different things and some of the different aspects of of the Christmas story. Uh, and then we left the Christmas story and we, we walked a little ways till uh, we found him in the temple at 12 years of age, uh, talking with the, the, the teachers there, the, the, the rabbis and uh, the religious folk of the day. Uh, remember we talk, talked about the message there was uh, the father's business. That's what he said when they came looking for him. What, wished you not, I must be about my father's business. And then we walked on a little bit farther with him, and we found him uh, next at the Jordan River. Uh, we found him at the baptism, uh, where he met John there at the Jordan, uh, and he uh, presented himself to John for baptism. And remember, John said, oh, wait, you know, I, I have need to be baptized of thee. Why come you to me? And he said, suffer it now to be so. So uh, they did, and he baptized him. And then uh, we found that phrase there that said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Uh, so we talked about being pleasing unto the Father. Will God say, well done. So we're going to walk a little bit further with Jesus today. Uh, we're going to find him in Matthew chapter number 4. Right after the baptism, we're going to find him in the temptation. We're going to find him in that moment in time uh, that dealt with the temptation of Christ. You know, some people fall into temptation. Sometimes it just seems like things just jump up and things happen. But, you know, if we'd be honest with, with ourselves and honest with God, we'd probably more, be more like the story that I heard or read about this week. Seems like there was a young man that his father ha had this, this problem. His, he, he would always go swimming in this canal that his father didn't want him to go swimming in. And his dad would always remind him, Son... Don't go swim in that canal. One day he came home and had wet clothes with him. And his dad said, son, where you been? The boy said, well, I've been uh, swimming in the canal. He said, son, have we not talked about that? He said, dad, I can't help myself. He said, what do you mean you can't help yourself? He said, I was just walking by there today and I had my swimsuit with me. And there was the canal and, and I just went swimming. His dad said, son. If you'll quit carrying your swimsuit with you, when you go by the canal, you won't want to go swimming. See, some folks fall into temptation. Some folks spend a lot of time planning on it and making a way for it. We've got to get to the place to where we're not planning for temptation. We've got to learn how to handle the temptation that comes against us from the evil one. Right. So I'll ask you this question and we'll read. Are you carrying your swimsuit with you? Are you making provision for temptation in your life? If you're able, let's stand. We'll read Matthew chapter number 4. Beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says this, Then was Jesus led, of the Spirit, led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, 
Command thee these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Said unto him, All these things will I give thee, that will fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Pray that you give us wisdom this morning. Help us to see your truth. Father, I pray that you will meet with us. And all things done will be for your honor and your glory. Father, draw that one that's closest to hell this morning. Help them to see their need for a Savior. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can be seated. So in this recount of the temptations of Christ, I find a statement here that we'll like to, to use and we'll build the message off of this, this statement this morning. We'll not deviate very far from this passage of Scripture this morning. But he said in verse number 3, And when the tempter came to him. When the tempter came. I'd like to preach a message this morning entitled, When the Tempter Comes. When the tempter comes. Number one, I'd like to say this. The tempter comes at the, at the right moment. He knows exactly when to come into our life. If you'll read the story, you'll look at what's going on here. We find out with Jesus. Number one, he, he's just come through. If, if we can understand the way I'm going to say this. He's just come through a spiritual victory uh, in the physical life of Christ. He came to the Jordan. He submitted himself to baptism. Uh, he went through that baptism uh, picturing what we need to do. Uh, the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove. The voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son whom I am well pleased. Oh, can I stop and say this? Do you need any other evidence of the Trinity of God? Right. All right, back to the message. He, he's just experienced a, a spiritual victory, if you will. The next verse that we read, in verse number 1 of chapter number 4, the Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The first thing that we need to understand is many times at, at, at following a spiritual victory, temptation will come. The tempter will come and he will try to steal that victory. He'll try to steal that joy. He'll try to steal that excitement. He, he'll try follow a great victory in our life. He, he'll try to remove that, that excitement from our lives. He'll try to bring temptation to us. So it comes at the very right moment. But let me say this as well and just kind of kind of show you the opposite side of that. Not only sometimes at the very peak of spiritual victory, but sometimes even in the, the moment of spiritual defeat, the tempter will come in and, and, and try to drive us even farther away from God and drive us deeper into our sin and drive us deeper into despair. But listen, the old tempter, he's not nice and he's not fun. He don't play fair. And what he'll do is he'll try to steal your victory or he'll try to drive you into depression. He he, he, he comes at the very opportune time to tempt us right. and draw us away from the truth. And like our illustration already, sometimes we make it pretty easy on Him. Sometimes we seem to carry our swimsuit around with us and we make things easy for Him. Right. Got to understand 
When the tempter comes, he's going to come at the right moment. He's going to come following victory. He may come following defeat. Sometimes he's going to come following distress in our life. Notice what it said in verse number 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. Verse 1 tells us the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness for the specific purpose to be tempted of the devil. And then verse 2 says the old devil waited 40 days and 40 nights before he showed up to do the tempting. Why? Because in that time of distress, now we're, I understand we're talking about the Son of God. I understand we're talking about God in flesh. I understand we're talking about deity. But you do understand that He was man. He was robed in flesh. And He still faced all the things that we face in our life. Right. And let me just clear this up before we get any further. I do not believe the temptation was a, a test to see whether Jesus could sin. I believe temptation was a demonstration or a declaration to show us that Jesus would not sin. Amen. There's a difference. It was a declaration to show that that, that tempter can be defeated. That there is a way, and that will be the message this morning when we finally get to it. So we find that the tempter will come at the right moment. He'll come and maybe follow a great victory in our lives. He'll come maybe follow a great defeat. He'll come following some distress in our life. What was the first thing that Jesus, that, that, that Satan said to Jesus in the temptation? Turn these stones into bread. Why? Because he had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Physically, the Bible says this. And afterward, he was in a hunger. His flesh hungered. And Satan knew exactly how and when to come and offer that temptation. Satan knows the right moment for you. Satan knows the right moment for me. So first of all, when the tempter comes, we've got to understand that, that he, he'll come at the right moment. Or at the wrong moment, however you want to look at that. Number two, we need to realize that he comes with the right enticement. He comes with the right enticement. Now, if you fish, when I started to, you know, I started to say he comes with the right lure, with the right bait. He comes because he knows what draws us. As you go through, and we're not spending a lot of time this morning dealing with all of these, but as you go through and you look at the temptations that, uh, that, that Satan threw at Jesus, remember, number one, he talked about the bread. Uh, he, he said in verse number three, let me get back over, I just turned it. He said, and when the tempter came unto him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. He, he, he appealed to the lust of the flesh. He said, your flesh is hungry. Your flesh is weak. Why don't you make these stones become bread that you can eat and satisfy yourself? Why don't you do this? Why don't you satisfy the flesh? Why don't you allow the flesh to be full? See, that lust of the flesh is the idea of the animal instincts that are within us. It's the lowest form of worldly indulgence. It's just the very basic needs of mankind. And if we're not careful, the lust of the flesh will take over. Because all of us have a desire for food. And all of us have a desire for shelter. And all of us have a desire for love. And all of us have a desire for companionship. And if we're not careful, what we'll do is we'll allow that fleshly lust to overcome us and lead us into a temptation situation where we are not seeking God, but we're allowing the flesh to lead us. Right. Our world is full. Unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately, our churches are full of people who live by the lust of the flesh. They feel they need it. Therefore, Therefore, they give in. Verse number 6, not only did he appeal to the lust of the flesh. Verse number 6, the Bible says this, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. 
Not only did he appeal to the lust of the flesh, he appealed to the pride of life. He appealed to the pride of life. Don't forget who you are. He knew who he was. Matter of fact, he quotes scripture several times about him. But he appealed to the fleshly pride of life. I remember when I, when I was a boy, one of the times that this became very evident in my life about being honest with ourselves about who we really are. You, know, you can't tell, I know, look at me. But I used to run, I used to run cross country when I was in high school. We used to run three to five miles every day. I loved it. I enjoyed it. My knees hate me now, but I loved it. I really did. And I remember one meet that I was in. I was, I was probably a freshman in high school. Maybe, maybe a junior, uh, sophomore, freshman, sophomore, something. I was a young guy. Just starting, just running. And our school, now our school, you have to understand. I, I'm going to give you this detail real quick. Our school, we had a t-shirt uh, that had uh, football, baseball, track, uh, football, baseball, track. There was one more. What, what basketball? We're not very good at basketball. But <laughs> it was a, but it was it was a, a shirt that had on it, and each one of those had four or five years that we had won uh, our, our district championships. Uh, you know that one shirt. You know it was just so our school. We were a pretty pretty well athletically uh, uh, school. I mean we, we enjoyed that. We we had some success. But I, I remember running this race, and I remember I, I wasn't real good. Okay, I ran. I, I, you know I, I didn't set any records. But if you could finish, that would be my, if I could just finish this right. But I remember running one specific race early in, in my career. And, and I got into a, a struggle or a, a foot race with a, man, a, a, a fellow from another team. And, and we were finishing up and we were probably a quarter of a mile from, from where it finishing up. Yeah, it's a three mile race, okay, quarter of a mile. We're finishing up. And he and I are side by side. And I'm running, and I remember thinking this, and I, you know, it just things that you remember. I remember thinking, don't he know who he's running against? I mean, don't he know where I'm doesn't, doesn't he know where I'm from? This boy needs to give up. <laughs> but he wouldn't. He kept running. And the more we ran, the more tired I got, and the more I kept thinking. Well, I'll tell you the rest of that story. He ended up beating me. <laughs> he beat me across the finish line, and I got a very, very rude awakening to the reality of life. Doesn't matter what jersey I had on my, uh, I was wearing. That was not going to help me. I'm the one that had to do the running. It wasn't about all that other stuff. It wasn't about the pride of who I was with and, and who my team was and, and who I was running. It wasn't about all that. It was about whether I could do the job or not. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the pride of life. We get so wrapped up in promoting self and, and promoting me and saying, boy, look, you, you, don't you know who I'm with? Don't you know what's going on in my life? Don't you know who my family is? I'm going to tell you, Satan doesn't care who your family is. He tempts you just like he tempts everybody else. He tempts all of us with the pride of life. He tempts all of us with the promotion of self. I'm glad Jesus responded to that correctly. We'll talk about that in a minute. In number three, in verse number nine, we find these words. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee that will fall down and worship me. He appealed not only the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. He also dealt, uh, uh, appealed to the lust of the eye. <clears throat> to the lust of the eye. See all of this? If you'll just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. Satan knows exactly how to entice us. He knows exactly what to do. He knows exactly how to get us. He knows exactly how to draw us away. I, I debated on whether I was going to use this illustration or not, but I guess I will. I may get in trouble. Some guys, y'all guys, guys, y'all ain't gonna like me, but it's okay. I read the story this week, and I was studying, looking for illustrations for the for, for this the idea of temptation. 
I read this little story. It seemed like this, this man, this woman, this husband and wife were, were shopping. And they were at some shopping center. They were shopping. And guys, most of us, as we do, we stand there and watch while she shops. Well, unfortunately, a young lady walked by while this husband and wife were shopping. And the husband spent a little bit too much time looking at the young lady as she walked by. The story goes like this. The wife never looked up. She just said, I hope that was worth the trouble that you're now in. <laughs> so I'll ask you the question. Is it worth the trouble that you're now in? See, Satan knows exactly how to entice us. He knows exactly what lure to throw. He knows exactly how to throw it and how to draw it. He knows exactly how to work it. Right. So here's the main question. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Let me give you the message. The tempter comes the right moment. The tempter comes with the right enticement. My Bible tells me that he can lead in defeat. He can lead. You do not have to give in to temptation. And we can go to several places and look at several different thoughts, but I just want to keep it right here. We're going to look at one verse in a different place, but I want to try to keep it right here in this passage. Let's learn from Messiah how can we overcome the temptation that comes into our life. Number one, I want you to realize, I want you to recognize the response. You realize that three times when Satan came against uh, Jesus, three times when he tempted Jesus, three times Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. You, you understand, we, we've already studied this, we've already seen this from the scriptures. But you understand, Jesus Christ had the authority. He's already said, you heard it said, but I say unto you. We've read that before. Right. We understand that He's God in flesh. We understand that he, he, he cast out demons. We understand that He healed the blind and He healed the sick and He caused the lame to walk. He's God. He could do anything that He wanted. But when temptation came His way and Satan sought to catch Him, the answer that Jesus gave the old devil was, <laughs> it is written. Amen. Demonstrating to us that we don't have to be deity. That we don't have to have miraculous power of God. That we don't have to be God in flesh. But we can take the word of God. And through the scriptures we can overcome that devil that comes against us in temptation. We can go back to the word of God and say, Well devil, it is written I do not have to give in to your temptation. Right. The book of Corinthians tells us very clearly that with every temptation he'll give us a way of escape. No, if we sin, it's not because we didn't have a choice. If we sin, it's because the old devil tempted us and we chose to follow and chose to sin. Right. The proper response is, it is written, look at verse number 4. Satan says, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus responds and says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He's quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. All three of these statements come from the book of Deuteronomy. That's a whole other message right there. You could preach a while on that one. It's all by itself. But he says here in verse number four, listen, it's not about the physical bread. It's not about the physical body. It's not about sustaining this life. It's about following and walking with God and trusting Him and letting God take care of you. You do understand that God can sustain our body whether we eat or not. Now, I know some of us find that hard to believe. If I miss a meal, you know, I just think I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. God's in control of this thing. He said in number two, in verse number seven, he said this, as it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He reminds him who he is and he reminds him what the Bible says about God and not tempting him and not testing him or trying him. 
And then in verse number 10, this said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Three times he responds with the word of God. Let me ask you a question. If you had to respond to your temptation by the word of God, what would you say? I'm sad to say that there's probably too many church members that would have to say, well, all I can respond with is John 3, 16, because that's all I know. That's why we walk with God. That's why we read our Bible. Oh, I know. I, you see, you think, it's a, you think it's a Sunday school thing. No, that's why we memorize the Word of God. Why? Because when temptation comes, then we have an arsenal within us that the Holy Spirit can bring up to our remembrance and say, no, I don't have to sin. I don't have to fall to temptation. Get me behind me, Satan. I don't have to do that because I have the promise of the Word of God that says I can stand. Where is that promise? Number two. The proper response is the Word of God. The powerful response finds itself. Now, this is the one verse we're going to turn to. Now, you know the verse. I'm going to read it. I understand. I'm preaching to the choir, but that's okay. James chapter number 4. James chapter number 4. We'll read a verse there because it's so misquoted, so misused. But you've heard us talk about it correctly, and you've said it correctly in the past. But let's just be reminded about the powerful response that can send the devil in defeat. Temptation. James chapter number 4. Verse number 7. says, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Is that what it says? I've got a Bible out there. Come on now. Help me out. Don't leave me up here by myself. Submit yourself. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. See, the Bible talks about this. The powerful response to the temptation of the devil is this. God, I want to submit myself to you. It's not about resisting the devil. Oh, that'll come. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to learn to submit ourselves to God. We've got to learn to submit ourselves to what God says. We've got to learn to submit ourselves to what God wants. We've got to learn to say, God, whatever it is. Now, I may not understand it. I may not know it. I may not realize how it all works together. But if you said it, I'll do it. We talked about this in Sunday school this morning. Can you imagine? The Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 6 that Noah, now if y'all were in Sunday school this morning, just smile, just take a break right here. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 6. It doesn't say anything about his boys. It doesn't say anything about his boys and their walk with God. But when daddy came to him and said, boys, here's the plan. We've got 120 years. We're going to build us a boat. It's going to rain. 120 years, it's going to rain. One of his boys said, uh, <clears throat> daddy, I got a question. What's rain? Son, water is going to fall from the sky. Excuse me? You understand it had never rained before. Okay, it's going to rain. God says it's going to rain. 120 years. We've got to build this big boat. It's going to be this big and this high and this long and this wide. And it's going to have three decks on it. Daddy, what's a boat? What's a boat do? They've never seen a boat in their life. What if it floats on water? Daddy, where's the water? They're on the side of a mountain. Where's the water? Oh, it's coming. So we're going to build this boat. We're just going to be this big, this high, this tall, this wide, three decks. But, and then we're going to put two of every kind of animal on this, on this big boat. Uh, Daddy, where are these animals coming from? All over the world, son. God's going to send them. I think some of you are catching on. At this point, most of us have been going, <clears> hmm. <throat> Call the Twinkie Wagon. I think Daddy's lost it. Get the Huggy Jacket. 
He needs some help. We're going to have to send. He's going to have to take a vacation for a little while. <laughs> no, what do these three boys do? Yes, sir. Right. And if that's what God says, that's what God says we're going to do. Where's the trees? Let's start coming. Where's the souls? Daddy will do it. They had to learn to submit themselves to the authority over them. They couldn't see the outcome. I guarantee you they were happy they listened to Daddy when it started raining. I guarantee you when they got on that boat and God closed the door and, and the rain started falling and all the people around there that for 120 years had laughed at them and made fun of them and ridiculed them and told them how crazy they were and told them they were stupid and told them that they didn't have any idea about what they were doing when that rain started falling and they started beating on that ark trying to get in. I bet you those three boys were glad they listened to that. I guarantee you when the rain starts falling in your life, you'll be glad you listen to God. Amen. Powerful response is this. We've got to submit ourselves to God. We've got to put ourselves under the authority of God. We've got to let God work in our lives. Three times Jesus said, it is written three times. Jesus quoted the Word of God. Three times Jesus said, no, it's about God. It's about God. It's about God. Finally. Tempter comes. He can leave in defeat. Look at verse 11 of our text. Then, then the devil leaveth him. Amen. Now, do you get the same picture I get? Now, my, my imagination sometimes gets away with me. I understand. But, but are you seeing the same thing that I see there? The old devil has come at the, at the opportune moment. He's brought his A-game. He came with just the right enticement. He thought, man, if it's ever going to happen, now's the time. Now's the place. Here are the things that are going to work. Verse 11. I see the old devil tucking his tail. Whipped. Defeated. Slinking off like the snake that he is. Listen, you want the devil to run from your life? You want victory over him? Here it is. Here it is. Walk with God. Amen. Learn the word of God. Understand the relationship with Him. You've got to come to a place where you know Christ as your Savior. You've got to come to a place where you've submitted yourself to the authority of God and you've said, I'll give myself to you. I'll trust you as my Savior. I may not understand everything that's in that book. I may not understand everything you want me to do. I may never understand what's in there, but I'll do what I know to do. I'll submit myself to your authority. I'll give myself to you. I will resist temptation by the Word of God. By faith I will walk. Walk with God. Amen. And if you'll start walking with God, by faith you'll start living for God. You'll see the victory of God. But here's the problem. The problem is we live in a society no one wants to pay the price right. for victory. We fall, listen, listen to me now. We fall for every get rich quick scheme that comes along. Why, why, do we, why do these things keep happening? Because somebody's falling. I, I get a call that every week. The ladies who work in the office, they'll probably help me with this. I, I get a call every week from somebody who wants to work on my computer. And they, I don't know, ladies, they always start with this one. This, these, 
This is the company that helped you last time. Why are these people still doing it? Because it works. Somebody responds. Somebody's giving them money. Somebody's talking to them. Why do we hear about a, a new get rich quick scheme every week? You know, it used to be Amway. Uh oh, get a nerve right there. Been there, done that. Draw sir, I drew circles. I'm okay. It's all right. <laughs> Just smile right there. You're fine. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Been there, done that. You know, it's going to be this. It's going to be that. We're going to make, you know, the, whatever it is. <clears throat> we don't want to pay the price. Now listen, if you're, going to, if you're going to walk with God, it's going to cost you something. You're going to walk with God. You're going to have a walk with Him. You're going to resist temptation. It's going to cost you something. You're going to have to work at it. General Dwight D. Eisenhower made this statement. I found this this week. I thought it was, was good for this message. He said, there are no victories at discount prices. There are no victories at discount prices. Now just grab your seat just for a moment. I'm going to preach just for a second. I'm going to, we don't have an invitation. You cut Wednesday night service, you ain't going to see victory. You're discounting. I, I come out there and amen myself. I got a Bible. It's okay. <laughs> you start cutting your prayer time. You ain't going to see victory. You're discounting prices. You start cutting your Bible reading. You ain't going to see victory. You're discounting prices. See, what we've got to do is we've got to walk with God. Amen. We've got to walk with God. Let me, let me, in conclusion, we understand that temptation comes at the right moment. You do realize temptation is coming. <clears throat> so you might as well get ready for it. You might as well buckle up, bow up, whatever you got to do to up, but you, you might as well get ready. Temptation's coming. Kind of like the, the, the picture I saw the other day. See, so when it's time to fight, it's time to fight like you're the third monkey on the ramp in Noah's Ark and it's starting to rain. <laughs> time to fight then, right? See, we've got to, when it's time to fight against temptation, we've got to fight. Temptation comes at the right moment. It comes at the right enticement. But it can be overcome. When you flee temptation, <laughs> I found this statement and I thought it was cute. When you flee temptation, don't leave a fall ring address. If I would have asked everybody in this room before we started, who in this room wants to have victory in their life? Everybody in the room would have raised their hand. Everybody in the room would have raised their hand. But victory comes with a price. Are you willing to pay the price for victory? Heads without eyes are closed. Father, we're thankful for another day. I pray that your 